Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to another video and today I'm going to be talking about reading group fiction. So, reading group fiction. This is a term slash genre that you may or may not have heard of. It is one that is used quite widely within the publishing industry but I very rarely hear people talk about who don't work in the publishing industry. I made a video a little while ago called on genres, labels and reading taste which I will link down below and um, when I mentioned reading group fiction as a category and quite a few people said they were intrigued to know what that would um, cover and what books I would consider reading group fiction. As far as I'm concerned reading group fiction is sort of at the upper upper end of commercial fiction and at the more accessible end of literary fiction. It is that little sweet spot in between commercial and literary that is both beautifully written, very thematically driven, but also has a really good damn plot. And that is what I like. Reading group fiction is the area that I like to read. So I'm going to attempt to define reading group fiction um, and then I'm going to give you recommendations of several authors that I think write reading group fiction, whose books I would consider reading group fiction and whose books I really, really love. I think it's probably easiest for me to define reading group fiction against literary fiction because a lot of the books I'm going to talk about today I hear people talk about and call it literary fiction and I'm not sure that it is like literary literary fiction. So recently um, Jasmine from Jasmine's Reads did a literary fiction tag and I'll link her original video down below and I found it really interesting and one thing I found really interesting was the way she defined literary fiction I think it's a really really useful definition so what she said was that for her literary fiction the following qualities are sufficient though perhaps not necessary one social political or human commentary two introspective character exploration three not being focused on or driven by plot and four a large focus on language so in order to describe reading group fiction i'm gonna um borrow some of her definitions and kind of change her definitions so for reading group fiction i would say it is sufficient though not necessary to have the following characteristics one social political or human commentary two exploration of complex themes three detailed character exploration but not introspective um specifically four being driven by plot and five accessible but crafted language basically what i mean is that a reading group fiction novel for me is a book that is accessibly written but the language is important but it's not the most important thing and it doesn't get away in the way of the story a reading group fiction novel is driven by plot and usually has an exciting and dramatic and interesting engaging plot reading group fiction would tend to have a lot of character exploration and development but it wouldn't necessarily be as introspective as a more literary novel and it would have exploration of complex themes and social political or human commentary but maybe not in the same more philosophical way that you might get in a literary fiction novel i hope that makes sense It'll make a little bit more sense maybe when I talk about some of the books on this list. And you know, every line is blurred. Um, there are no real genre boxes in literature. So all of the books I talk about today, some people might consider them to be commercial books and a lot of people may consider them to be literary fiction books. But I think they exist in this little category of their own. I should explain, obviously, the term reading group fiction comes from like reading groups. Um, the idea being that books within the reading group category are books where there's a lot to discuss that you could discuss with your reading group and a lot of like things to think about but also they're like accessible enough that like a quite varied reading group of people could all get something out of that book so I'm going to start off with a book that I can categorically say is reading group fiction um, and that is The Familiars by Stacey Halls. Now The Familiars is published by Zappa which is the imprint where I work which is why I can say that it's reading group fiction because that's how we talk about it at work. I didn't work on The Familiars myself, it's not one of my books um, but it is a truly fantastic novel. It is a historical fiction novel, it is set in the early 17th century um, and it follows a woman called Fleetwood um, who kind of gets caught up in the Pendle witch trials. The reason why I would say this is reading group fiction is because it is beautifully written and it has a fantastic exploration of complex themes and character development but it's also an utter page turner like it's such a page turner it's very very dramatic and the plot is just thoroughly exciting throughout which I think is not what you would expect from a literary fiction like literary literary fiction book because the familiars is very very plot driven and yes there are a lot of other things driving it as well but it is a plot driven book and that is I think what makes it reading group fiction rather than literary and also I think makes it more accessible and definitely a book that is more up my street and also like I said the writing is um, very crafted and really beautiful but it is always entirely accessible which I think is definitely a feature of reading group fiction like if a book is written in an experimental writing style that definitely pushes it into literary rather than reading group fiction for me. One author who for me is a real like core reading group fiction writer is Sarah Waters. This is Tipping the Velvet which is her first novel. Um, I've read three of her novels and loved all of them. I hear lots of people talk about Sarah Waters as a literary fiction writer and every time they do I'm like but 
but the plots but they're so so plot driven they're page turners are they literary is that is that a thing does that work and you know you can define genre however you like really because it's very very complex but as far as i'm concerned the very plot driven nature of Sarah Waters books makes them more kind of reading group fiction than literary and also makes me like them more than very very literary books and um, the reading group fiction is really like where my where my taste lies. Sarah Waters is a fantastic writer she writes historical fiction the three that I've read are all set in the Victorian period though she has some set in the 20th century and her books have fascinating characters um, and a really interesting exploration of sort of what it was like to be alive in the Victorian period especially looking at um, lesbian and gay communities within the Victorian period and they are complex and fascinating and really interesting and the language is important but the language also never gets in the way of the plot and it's not the main feature and they're also incredibly plot driven with twists and turns along the way perhaps i should have held up fingersmith instead because this book has more plot twists in than nearly anything else i've read and when you get to a stage when you're like surely there can't be any more plot twists suddenly there's another this is a real page turner and is incredibly plot driven like Sarah Waters writes fantastic stories and the plots are incredibly important and yeah I love her books a lot I would highly highly recommend them. Another author who I think writes fantastic reading group fiction is Diane Setterfield. This is The Thirteenth Tale um, but I have also read and loved Bellman Black and Once Upon a River. She writes brilliant books all of which have beautiful lyrical writing, really fascinating themes and characters um, really interesting looks at history often but also complete page turners um, with big twists and hooks in them which I love. The Thirteenth Tale is my favourite one of her books and it tells the story of Margaret Lee, a woman who has grown up in an antiquarian bookshop who is an amateur biographer and one day is approached by the most famous author in the country to um, write her biography and she goes to visit Vida Winter and Vida Winter tells her her life story and she has to kind of write this down and figure it out. So there's a lot of mystery elements going on in this book, a lot of gothic, a lot of very mysterious complicated things um, and while there is a kind of focus on language to a certain extent because of the kind of love of writing in books that's in here it's also very very accessible really really readable and like you can get through it so fast because it's so damn exciting and I would say that is true for her other two books as well. Another historical writer I think would fall into this category is Tracy Chevalier this is The Girl with the Pearl Earring which is my favourite book by her. Tracy Chevalier writes fantastic historical fiction that is really interesting um, and has a lot of character development and a lot of historical insight but is also quite fast paced and plot driven um, and also really really accessible in terms of the writing style um, which is something I really really like like there's nothing too lyrical or flowery or inaccessible or tricky about Tracy Chevalier's writing it is clear and straightforward and I love it. The Girl with the Pearl Earring is my favourite it follows um, a young woman who goes to work as a maid in the house of an artist and kind of ends up getting involved in his artwork um, it's such a brilliant character study so well done and I just yeah I love so many things about this book. The next writer I want to mention is Robert Harris. There are plenty of books by Robert Harris that I haven't discovered yet but I have read his Cicero trilogy which is a trilogy of three books following the life of the real um, ancient Roman statesman Cicero um, but this is a fictionalised account obviously. These books are like historical thrillers sort of they are incredibly fast-paced incredibly dramatic with like so many so many things going on and so much drama and conflict and in many ways they are like i said kind of historical political thrillers but the themes that robert harris explores through this trilogy make them um a bit more reading group and the kind of social and political commentary within his books is just fantastic Another writer I want to mention is Jessie Burton. I know we're being very historical so far. I will come on to some non-historical people later in the video. I've only read The Miniaturist. I haven't read her other books, um, but I loved The Miniaturist so much. It, like many reading group fiction novels, um, is beautifully written but accessible. It is powerful and dramatic. It looks so interestingly at social issues in 17th century Amsterdam, which is when it's set. But it also is really fast paced with a lot of twists and turns and a really exciting dramatic plot. Like this book had me on the edge of my seat. It's so powerful and so beautiful. Um, but also, yeah, very, very dramatic all the way throughout. I would highly, highly recommend it. It follows a young woman who um, gets married near the beginning of the book to a man she doesn't know um, and is suddenly pushed into this household with this husband she barely knows who doesn't pay much attention to her with her sister-in-law who doesn't seem to like her and two servants who she doesn't quite understand and yeah it's just such a fantastic novel. I also want to mention Natasha Pulley I've read both her books The Watchmaker of Filigree Street and The Bedlam Stacks and I love both of them. I think she's probably slightly more at the literary end of some of the other authors that I've been talking about. I don't think her writing is 
as accessible as, um, for example, Tracy's Chevalier, but I do think it is fairly accessible and it's probably just slightly more on the lyrical end. There are a lot of things that I love about Natasha Pulley's books. I think her work is incredibly historically fascinating, um, really wonderfully written and powerful with such interesting, fascinating themes and a really interesting look at kind of cultural identity and clashes of culture in the 19th century with a little bit of a supernatural twist sometimes too. But also her books have really exciting dramatic plots and really fantastic climax and like so many interesting plot points along the way um, with a really like powerful weaving together of plots definitely things that I love just yeah I love Natasha Pulley so so much and The Watchmaker of Physical Street is one of my favourite books the next writer I want to mention is Essie Edgeguan. This is Washington Black, um, which is her historical fiction novel set in 19th century America following a um, young boy who has grown up as a slave and who ends up sort of running away with the brother of his master um, to sort of work with him as an apprentice scientist. Now this was long listed for the Man Booker Prize, um, which in many ways would make it seem a bit more literary because that is a very, very literary prize. But actually I would say that Washington Black is much more in the reading group fiction area of the market than it is in sort of really really literary writing one because the writing is really accessible but also because it's really really plot driven like this in many ways is an adventure novel and yes there are a lot of fantastic themes dealt with in here to do with class and race and so many fascinating themes but it's also got a really exciting plot um, and the characters kind of travel all over the world it has a little bit of the adventure fairy tale about it and that I think makes it a little bit more in the realms of reading group fiction because the plot is so great the next writer I want to mention is Emma Donoghue I love this book the Wonder so much. It is my favourite book of 2019 so far and a truly fantastic read um, and it follows a woman called Lib who is a nurse in the Victorian period and she travels from England to Ireland to watch over this young girl who claims that she hasn't eaten anything for months. This book um, deals with so many interesting themes and is wonderfully written with such fantastic character development but it's also a real real page turner and so gripping and so dramatic and so exciting like I just I read this so quickly and I was so thoroughly drawn into this story story it wasn't one where you were like gonna sit and stop back and think about it because it was just so dramatic that you just have to keep reading and I love that a lot I would also put um the other book by Emma Donoghue I have read room into the reading group fiction category as well that is a modern book which follows um a little boy whose mother was abducted as a young woman um, and he lives in this room with his mother and he's never been anywhere else in his life and that is another one which deals with very hard-hitting themes um, and really really important issues and has amazing characterization um, and really really interesting exploration of social issues but is also very gripping um, as well throughout. Another author I'd like to mention in the reading group fiction category is Kate Morton. This is her book The Clockmaker's Daughter. I've also read and loved The House at Riverton and The Forgotten Garden. Kate Morton writes time slip novels where you often have like a present day storyline and a 19th or early 20th century storyline and kind of flick between them. There's often a mystery to be solved. They're very plot driven. The writing is very accessible but also I think really enjoyable. Kate Morton is a fantastic writer and um, I've loved all of the books by her that I've read. Um, they, she often writes quite long like chunky books that you can really sink your teeth into and there's a fantastic mystery and a lot to find out but they're also really historically interesting with a lot of fascinating themes and really good characterization as well. The next author I want to mention is David Mitchell and um, this one is Slade House though my favorite by him is Cloud Atlas and I've also read The Bone Clocks which I really enjoyed. He is a very interesting writer who writes slightly weird crazy books that are kind of speculative and often are like interconnected series of novellas within one book rather than like an overall arching narrative which sounds a bit crazy but though David Mitchell's use of like plot and structure and genre is very very experimental his writing is really really accessible and his books are very plot driven um, and often kind of get into sort of sci-fi and supernatural speculative territory. Cloud Atlas is my favourite one um, and is a truly fantastic book which kind of follows six different people throughout time who kind of share a soul maybe maybe there's some little reincarnation going on there or maybe they're just people with similar characteristics and um, sort of it kind of spans from back in the past into way into the future um and yeah david mitchell's books are really enjoyable the next writer i want to mention is taylor jenkins reed i have read two of her books the seven husbands of evelyn hugo and daisy jones and the six um i haven't read her earlier work i believe her early work falls sort of more into commercial women's fiction categories um, than it would into reading group fiction categories but both of these two books i think are definitely reading group novels they are 
page turnery, plot driven, very very accessible writing with so many interesting themes and plenty to talk about if you're meeting up in a book club. In fact I did read um, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo for a book club and we had a lot to discuss about those characters. Man do we have a lot to discuss. Daisy Jones and the Six which you might have heard of because it's been quite big on booktube follows um, a band called The Six and a singer called Daisy Jones and the kind of complex relationships and dynamics between that band and it's told in the form of interview transcripts. And then The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo follows a um, film star and kind of her seven husbands and who was or wasn't the love of her life. Such a fantastic book and one that I would highly recommend. The next author I want to mention is Celeste Ng. Um, I read her book Everything I Never Told You last year and absolutely loved it. I really must read Little Fires Everywhere as well which I have on my shelves. Everything I Never Told You is definitely a book that I would think of as reading group fiction. Again it's one that I read for a book club um, and we had a lot to discuss in it but it's also very very accessible and it has quite a dramatic like plot and um, mystery at its heart. We know from the beginning of the book that a young girl called Lydia who has disappeared is dead but her family don't know this and we follow her family kind of discovering what happened to Lydia and trying to work out what went wrong. Lydia's mother is white American and her father is Chinese American and it's set in the 1980s in a small town in America and looks really interestingly at racism and family and the com complex relationships within family and like gender roles and what women might have to give up at this point in time. And all of that stuff is so fascinating but it's also written so accessibly with such like precise language that is really easy to follow um, and is just so so interesting um, and engaging to read. Another author I would recommend is Emily St. John Mandel. I've read all four of her books, um, The Lola Quartet and Station Eleven which I'm holding up and also Last Night in Montreal and The Singer's Gun. She is one of my favourite modern authors absolutely one of my favourite modern authors. She writes fantastically um, and she writes brilliant books with such interesting themes and um, such fantastically drawn characters with such precise writing and such gripping plots like oh my goodness the Leonard Quartet, so much drama going on in here. In Emily St. Germandel's novels you will find um, things that you often find in commercial fiction, very very strong and dramatic plots, villains and mysteries and intrigue but you will also find like fantastic writing but very precise and accessible writing like I said and also like such interesting themes and exploration like there's just there's just so many things that I love about Emily Syndrome Mandel and for me she is like a key reading group author of like contemporary set reading group fiction because a lot of the fiction I've been talking about today is historical um, and I think historical fiction lends itself very well to reading group because often if you're writing something set in a historic time period you're often going to be sort of commenting on the society in that time period and um, to a certain degree but also that time period might give you a lot of scope for a really interesting plot um, but Emily Syndrome Mandel is one writer who is writing book set in the present day for the most part and this one a little bit in the future as well um, but she still writes like such good reading group fiction as far as I'm concerned where her writing is always accessible and clear it's not super literary it's quite commercial and accessible and really engaging and um, with a really strong plot and really easy to follow writing and characters but at the same time like the theme she explores um, and the poignancy of her writing um, and the amount you could discuss about the theme she explores and make it a little bit more in reading group territory. Basically this is the area of fiction that I love. Things that are like at the upmarket end of commercial and at the more accessible end of literary fiction. Books that are really fantastic in terms of their characterization and their character development and their character exploration are fantastic in terms of their themes and their kind of social and political and human commentary books which are beautifully written but also have accessible language that's really easy to get into that doesn't trip you up that you can read quickly and that have fantastic plots that are really well crafted really dramatic that keep you turning the pages and reading it as fast as you can to work out what happens books that you're not just reading for what is this book saying but you're reading for what's going to happen in this story books that are great stories not just interesting um thought experiments i hope this video is useful and understandable i feel like maybe i should explain if I'm saying all of these authors are reading group fiction, whereas I know lots of people would refer to them as literary authors, and um, if I were to name a few literary fiction authors who I would consider literary rather than reading group fiction, I would say someone like John McGregor or Ali Smith or um, Will Self or Michael Ondaatje or Sarah Moss, all people who write slightly more experimental fiction and also fiction that is more premise than plot. So. 
I think that is all for today. Like I said, I hope this video was useful and interesting. I feel like it's been a bit rambly, um, but I hope you have a clearer idea um, from this video about what I mean when I talk about reading group fiction. And hopefully you will have read some of these books and enjoyed them and might discover other books that you might enjoy which fit into a similar category. So yeah, thank you so much for watching and I'll be back very soon with another bookish video.